Hey guys, so recently I told you that I have not yet had a chance to use a blending board, but just the other day I used a blending board for the very, very first time and became completely addicted. So today I wanna to talk to you about what's the difference between a blending board versus a drum carter, why you might want one over the other. What's the difference? Hey there, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about something to do with knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. Today I'm talking about fiber prep for spinning, basically preparing your fiber for spinning. And like many, many of you maybe, I have been spinning combed top, commercial combed top that has been hand painted. I've been spinning this kind of stuff for many, many years. And a couple of years ago, I got introduced to the idea of a blending board, which is this. This is the Ashford blending board. I have never actually, I will, I did not use a blending board until just two days ago. Uh, I have for a long time had a drum carter. I saved up a lot of money many, many years ago, and I went and I bought myself an electric drum carter made by Patrick Green. It was one of the most exciting experiences ever for me. Uh, Patrick Green and his wife, Paula Simmons, she's a spinner, she's an author. Um, they actually lived in Chilliwack in near British Columbia. And so it was like a two hour drive, one hour drive, one and a half hour drive, something like that from Vancouver. And so I bought this drum carter, drove out to Chilliwack to meet both uh, Paula and Pat to pick up this drum carter in person. And um, you know, it was it was just such an honor to be able to meet. <laughs> it was so exciting to be able to meet Paula because I'd read her books and she'd written books about spinning and weaving and she had um, so many ideas that really resonated with me. And so I was very excited to meet her. Yeah, I was just very excited to receive this electric drum carter. I thought it was gonna change my life and that I was gonna spend so much time making tons and tons of uh, bats. And I love the look of carded bats, but they took a lot longer to make than I had expected. Um, even with an electric drum carter, e even taking away that process of hand cranking a drum carter, I felt like I would be able to process fiber much faster than I actually did. Um, and so I think that the amount of time that was required in order to prepare a lot of bats, I just sort of slipped into the convenience of being able to spin from combed top, just to be able to spin from the stuff that was commercially prepared, that I had dyed, um, that I was excited about, you know, playing with the colors and all sorts of things like that. And it was definitely possible without having to do a whole bunch of fiber prep. So blending boards started to become kind of popular in the past couple of years. And I just see all these beautiful photos coming up on Instagram of people making these beautiful hand-pulled Rolags, just colorful, textured, just so many beautiful things that you could make on a blending board. And um, it sort of started to trigger my mm, curiosity and some interest again in making carded preparations. So this here, this is not my electric drum carter. This is a manual, uh, sort of a standard drum carter from Ashford. You can see this is the, the big drum here. This is a liquor in drum, and this is the brush attachment. So this brush attachment, you can choose to have pushed down on the drum if you like or not. So it depends on how you want to make your bat. Um, let me just tighten that up there. But yeah, basically the idea with the drum carter is you feed your fiber in under here. It gets delivered by the liquor in. It doesn't, shouldn't wrap around the liquor in. It just gets delivered by the liquor in and then ends up on the big drum over here. And then you just crank this nice and easy and you'll be able to produce a bat at the end of the day. Now with the blending board, this is also made by Ashford. This one is a 12 inch by 12 inch blending area. And so this one, obviously nothing's moving, nothing's turning, all of the work is being done by you. And so the cloth is not exactly the same. It's not exactly the same. The tines, I feel like on the drum card are a little bit further apart. The tines on this, uh, this blending board are a little bit finer, a little bit closer together. But the idea is that you could, if you didn't want to buy a pre-made blending board like this, you could buy just the cloth and then staple it, like it's really hardcore staple gun it to a cutting board or something like that. And you make your own DIY blending board. So this is one thing, this is the other thing. And <laughs> I was very excited. I had the opportunity just two days ago to use it for the very first time. And 
these are the first Rolex that I've ever made from a blending board. I was so excited. Um, it's so, so fun and so satisfying to play with this. And so I kind of got a little bit into it. <laughs> and then I made another set here. So this is uh, kind of like a purple set. It's got some silk noil in it. This also has some pure silk in it. There's pole, pole worth in silk as a base. Um, and yeah, just super, super lovely and fun and carded. So the difference between your combed preparation and your carded preparation is that with a combed preparation, like this here, this fiber here, this is commercial combed preparation. The way that this is made is that all of the fibers of your wool have been aligned into this mostly parallel format. So they're, they're mostly parallel. You can hopefully see them like this. So they're mostly parallel. And so when you spin from them, they're gonna stay mostly parallel. And by staying parallel, it contributes to a yarn that's going to be uh, more smooth, more shiny, more dense, more compact. And that's a worsted spun yarn. Now with something like this, you can see that the fibers are not parallel. In fact, they're kind of like going like this. They're rolled. They're kind of, some of them are going this direction, this direction. They're just, there's a lot of fibers and each one's kind of going in a slightly different direction. And then when you spin it, you spin it from the end of the roll leg, which again contributes to the disorganization of those fibers. And that produces a woolen spun yarn. And you want kind of that disorganization because it pr produces kind of a scaffolding effect in there where all of these fibers are kind of at different angles, but they produce these pockets of air inside the yarn. And that helps to produce a much more spongy, soft and insulating yarn. So those are the two general kinds of yarn that you can spin from different fiber preparations. So this is this is my roll leg. I'm just starting to kind of draft out this roll leg a little bit so you can see how it how it works. But it is already very airy, very poofy. It's gonna be really nice and soft yarn. Okay, I should stop touching that. <laughs> so what is the difference between these two things? Obviously they look very different, but what are the practical differences between being able to make a drum carded bat versus being able to make a blending board bat? One of the main differences is how much fiber you can actually put on each one of these devices. So this, I actually just weighed it, and this is basically 26 grams worth of fiber. And when I put it on, I put it on pretty full. Um, and I rolled off these three roll eggs. I feel like I could have rolled off a little bit less. Maybe I could have made them a little bit lighter, a little bit finer. But in any case, uh, these are the three roll eggs that I pulled off. And uh, 26 grams is almost one ounce. Whereas with a drum carter, you should be able to put on almost three or four ounces of fiber. So significantly more fiber can go into this bat than into these into into this blending board bat. So there's that aspect, it's the time aspect, it's how much fiber can fit on each one of these. And then it's also a matter of how much does the fiber get teased apart and how homogeneous does that blend become? I have this feeling that the drum carter blends things in a much more homogeneous way. It just breaks up the fiber chunks a little bit more, spreads them out, and it's just a much, much more uh, even distribution of the colors that you're putting onto the drum carter. Whereas with the blending board, you can kind of apply the fiber in exactly the spots that you want and keeping them in that spot. So that's one of the other differences that I'm finding. So what I wanted to do is I'm gonna make a couple of um, fiber preps here and playing with some of the fiber that I have collected. I dyed all of these there's fiber here, there's fiber here, there's more fiber here. You can see here, this is from one of these roll eggs, one of these roll eggs. I just started to spin some of my yarn, just as a sample, just to see how it would kind of work up and look. And you can kind of see, it's quite airy, it's quite fluffy. This is the fluffiest yarn. Um, I think that if I were to spin all of this, I'd make one ounce of really super fluffy woolen yarn. So I have fiber here. There's another bag of fiber here. It's just fiber everywhere. And uh, 
it would be neat to use it not as is, not just as it has been dyed, but if I blend it together a little bit to make something completely brand new. Now, I've been talking about this course for some time now because I'm so excited about this course, but Debbie Held, uh, she taught a class for the School of Sweet Georgia called Blending Boards from Rolex to Rovings. So she demonstrates a whole bunch of different ways that she uses a blending board. So she shows you how to make smooth Rolex, how to make textured Rolex, how to make bats, how to make batlings, how to dis off of the board, all of these different techniques. And one of the things that I got to see while I was watching her film this class is that she keeps this collection of the most beautiful and luxurious little bits and pieces, like little luxurious fibers that you can add in to your carded preparations. So whether it's a bit of silk, pure silk, or silk noil, or there's neps, or there's texture, there's angelina, or there's a little bit of sparkle, all of that stuff she keeps in this, uh, it, it's like a hardware tackle box. Yeah, like a hardware tool kit. And so that inspired us to make a similar kind of kit, which we have put together. It's gonna be called the Mixins Spinning Kit, right? Mixins Spinning Set. Basically, it's a starter set of little things like a bit of sparkle. This one's Angelina. There's a bit of silk noil. There's some mohair locks, there's wool naps, there's sari silk, and fire star, and finally there's pure silk, but I used all the pure silk, it's all gone now. So you can just use a little bit of these different fibers and just sprinkle it in to whatever you happen to be making. So I'm gonna use this kit. We have them, they're all in random assortment of colors. There's all different colors in every box, so there's no way to really choose which exact set. But it's a great way to just add a little bit of color and a little bit of texture. Like this one, this sari silk is so fun. This yellow sari silk I used and just sprinkled in a little bit with that turquoise yarn. And you can see, it just shows up as little flecks here and there. You just need a little bit, you don't need a ton. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and weigh out a little bit of fiber so I know exactly how much is gonna go on each preparation. I'm gonna to try to use the same colors and the same kinds of uh, textures and sparkles and all sorts of things like that, and then see what the difference is between the two preparations that I make. So inside the Ashford box is also, comes with a keel. This one kind of holds up the blending board. And there's also this fabulous little brush here. So this brush is to brush down your fiber as you're blending it. And there are two dowels for taking your bat off or rolling the roll eggs. So I'm gonna make some stuff. Okay, so there we have it. So this is the bat that was created on the drum carter. This is about 45, 50 grams of fiber. You can see it's so light and airy and fluffy. This is about half a braid's worth of fiber. When you think about a braid and how compact it is and how you can get 100 grams in a very compact format, and this is just half of it, and look at how huge it is. 
this is huge. So you can just imagine how much air is in a fiber preparation like this. So this is the bat that came off of the drum carter. And then I used about half of the amount to make um, blending board Rolag. So this is the same colors in the same proportions. This is about 25 grams worth of fiber. This is about 50 grams worth of fiber. But you can see that the color distribution is going to be significantly different between the two of these. And that when you go to spin this, these ones will spin up in a certain way and these ones will spin up in a much, mm, in a different way. So with your bat, you can do all sorts of things. You could decide to break it in half this way. You could start to break your bat in half this way, stripping it. And then maybe you take each one of these halves and then you pull it into a longer roving, just kind of breaking it up a little bit more so that you can manage this fiber. But yeah, that's a bat. And these are the roll eggs. So these ones are super fun to make as well and just take up significantly less time. I feel like this one I was cranking and cranking for, for a long time and it just felt like when I was getting close to the end of the fiber, I was like, oh, what a relief, I'm getting to the end. Um, but with the blending board, it just took way less time. I know it's half the fiber, but it took less than half the time for sure. So uh, ultimately it just depends on what you're kind of looking for, what kind of fun you wanna have with your fiber preparation. Drum Carter can make huge amounts of fiber or much bigger amounts of fiber and roll eggs will be smaller, but they'll be faster to make. It's a little bit more compact. And then just cost wise, there's a huge difference in cost. These are about a couple hundred dollars. These ones start at probably four, five, six hundred dollars um, for a drum carter. And for electric drum carter, it's gonna be significantly more expensive, like in the thousands of dollars. So that's kind of the breakdown of those different fiber preparation tools. Now, if you are at all interested in learning how to make your own bats with a drum carter, we do have a class on the School of Sweet Georgia called Carding for Color with Katrina Stewart. And she goes through all the steps of different kinds of fiber that you might want to apply and um, how you would use a drum carter to blend those things together, either for color or for texture or to make things more homogeneous, all sorts of different things like that. And then, of course, we have the blending board class on the school as well with Debbie Held, and she teaches you how to make roll eggs and all sorts of other kinds of fiber preparation. Now, I think that the reason why I have this fascination with carded fiber preparation right now is because I'm personally trying to work really hard to improve my own spinning technique. I have again, spun for a long time with commercial top, commercial combed top. And so I spin a lot of worsted yarn. For some reason, I always felt like smooth, shiny, fine yarn, lace yarn, that's what I wanted to make. And over the years, I think as I got better at making things smoother and shinier, they became a little bit more, um, uh, hard and not as soft and airy and light and fluffy as I think hand spun yarn could be. And so one of my uh, interests in working with sort of card preparation is to see if I can make that really soft and airy yarn while still making it stable enough to do things like weave with it. So yeah, this is kind of like a, a rabbit hole that I'm going down a little bit right now. So I would love to hear from you. Do you have a blending board? Do you prefer a blending board to a drum carter? Or do you have a drum carter and do you prefer using a drum carter over a blending board? Uh, as you can see, they make just different fiber preparations. They distribute color in a different way. And um, you can have both. <laughs> Super fun to have. Now, before we go today, I wanna to show you one more thing that I pulled off of the blending board. Because once I started getting going with making these roll eggs, I just, I couldn't seem to stop putting fiber on the blending board. And so I pulled out some of the fiber that I had dyed uh, a while back for the book that I wrote, Dying to Spin and Knit. And it is a colorway that we called Garden Party. And uh, you can kind of see, I have broken it up completely and distributed all the color. And I added in um, a bunch of Tassa silk. So this, all these olive streaks here are Tassa silk. And, um, yeah, I put in a little bit of leftover turquoise. I have turquoise in all of the fiber preps that I've made today because I have so much of this turquoise. And so it's just blending together and everything. The orange here, the gold here is also Tessa silk, pure silk. And so I just pulled this off rather than making it into roll eggs, I've pulled it off as a bat as well. And so this bat is again about 25 grams as opposed to this bat, which is about 50 grams. This one is significantly more fiber, more dense. You can just feel it, it's heavier. 
and this one is light and airy and fluffy. And so this one I could as well roll it up this way and eventually pull it into roving or I could break chunks off of it and spin each chunk in succession. Maybe I'll do that. So we'll see. But basically, <laughs> they are super fun and quick to make. So you can make a bat on a blending board without a drum carter and still produce a big fluffy chunk of fiber. So that is basically it for today. Thank you so much for being with me here to play with these blending devices. <laughs> If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more things about the fiber arts, please do hit subscribe. We come here every Friday and we talk about something to do with knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. We basically like to talk about craft and color and things that make us happy. So thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.